Hello YouTube, hello boys and girls and welcome back. You're watching my Hearts of Iron 3 Germany Let's Play. The year is 1936, February the 5th. My order of battle is set. I will put the theater map mode on so you can see how I organized it. I have HQ West. HQ East. The reason why I didn't set the leader for HQ West is because I don't consider the theater leader so important as other leaders. But let's let's give it a one. Let's let's go with the, with the offensive. No logistic logistic wizard combined with the old guard. Skill 1 is quite good because each skill level for theater HQ leader reduces the stacking penalty by 1% so it's not something that I consider important and this old guard trait experience gain minus 50% will influence only the Frank only the Frank only the leader of that HQ only him not no one else so nothing much to worry about uh, logistic wizard supply consumption minus 25% the actual amount that will reach my divisions depends on how many subordinates it have so each subordinate split that trait into a half I forgot to connect it to my second army. Let's do it right now. So this second army will get maximum 25%. Um, uh, the the full actual actually the full trait, the full minus 25% supply consumption. Uh, each subordinate down below in the chain will get that bonus half down so minus 50% minus 50% minus 50% minus 50% up to the level of divisions I can also skip skip one HQ and I can connect one division directly into a theater HQ command and that way this division will get full trait of minus 20 25 percent supply consumption but i but why people do not do it because then you are losing all the traits and skill bonuses from other leaders in a chain for example you can see that i have army you can see the four four crosses over here so the minimum the minimum um level is brigade it's a one cross if you, you you can watch this recording in a full hd full screen no problems and i recommend you to do so you can see that brigade have one x then uh, brigades are in a division division have two x's over here you can see it here and you can see it on a minimap here then after division we have corpse with three x then we have army with 4x and then we have army group with 5 and on the top is a theater with 6 so i was talking about why i don't wanna attach this division directly into a theater because i'm losing the skill bonuses from each leaders in a chain you can see that i have skipped one one HQ because this army can be connected to army group but currently I don't have such need in a future when I start war with um, with friends I will definitely connect the army to the army group HQ because for me army groups are the most important because if you have a highly skilled leader for example let's take a look HQ East my Eastern theater I have a full chain of command here under the HQ East we have first army group led by Guderian 
which have skill of 5. Each of those skill levels reduces the supply consumption by 5%. So it's a 25% less supplies for all those divisions and brigades down below. So each division will get a full bonus from leader skill. But leader traits you can see that Guderian have three different traits. One of them is this uh, p -p -p brown, not brown, it's um, well, the color black and white. Oh man, I, I cannot remember the name of color. Kill me, man. Alright, the trickster only influences Guderian, no one else. Same as Old Guard. Old Guard is the same color trait, so it influences only him. But all other traits, you can see this Offensive Doctrine and Battle Master. Those traits will be split in a half after each command. So this army will get full bonus out of this trait, then uh, uh, this army group, sorry, army group gets full bonus. You can see that I have first army and first corpse. All who are attached to the first army group will get full bonus out of those traits. You can see first army is attached and the first corpse is attached. Let's check out the first army. First army will get the full bonus of all those traits. I have already explained you how traits are split on uh, this western theater but let's now take a look at the skill bonuses skill bonus do not get split in half so everyone down below in the chain of command will get full bonus out of his skill level so this general is skill 5 as i said uh, each skill level reduces supply consumption by five percent then we have army HQ. Army leader is currently List. His name is List. Skill 4. Uh, Army HQ leaders, each skill level of him reduce, uh, increases the organization by 1% per level. So each of those divisions will also get increased organization by 4%. And then, under the army, we have corpses, and the leader who leads the corpse, each of his uh, skill levels will increase the chances that reserves division will enter the combat. I also do not consider it to be so important. I have to say sorry because I made short break my girlfriend entered the room and just started to make noise and i must say i was i was really angry maybe i overreacted but all right she's gone <laughs> oh how evil i am all right so i have explained you the basic the basic basic concept of order of battle and why it is so important you can see that this corpse here is not attached to first army but it is the attached to first army group so i have skipped one chain let's try to attach it to first army and follow the orders you can see this red line that means it is out of the range because each HQ have a range in which can in which it can support to its subordinates. If you mouse over this green HQ button, you can see that this army can help out its attached units optimally within 400 kilometers. Let's see how far. You can see that this HQ button now is red. And the tooltip says this unit is out of the range from one of the HQs it is attached to. 
you can see that first army is 409 kilometers away from the first corpse maybe i can move that first corpse somewhere over here it will be closer and then i can attach it to first army but i don't want to do it i don't want to do it because army can have five corpses attached to it same as a corpse it can have five divisions attached to it same as a first army group it can have five armies attached to it and what i'm planning to do i will i will detach and attach it to army group so i will skip the army hq because I am, you can see that my production queue is currently full and the next infantry corps that I will build will be positioned over here in a border with Czechoslovakia and that corps will be attached to the first army. I will create the second army later when I open the front line with, uh, with the Soviet Union which is much larger in surface. I'm planning to have, I will show you with a battle plan, I'm planning to have a border somewhere like this, it's a quite large, and maybe if I manage to pull Romania into Axis, maybe I even expand myself like this and what my current plans are let's speed up the things a little bit and before I explain you that I have I have realized that I have some technology that I would like to research that I forgot in the deployment phase and I'm devoting too much of my leadership to espionage. You can see that I have tons of free spies. I really don't need so much. So I can lower that down. I need those doctrines to improve my submarines. I have also noticed something else. Special forces not needed. Theory. I don't want to research ahead of the time. I, have, I was already talking about it. Uh, as a Germany, you really have tons of leadership, so you can allow yourself to research rocket tests, later atomic research and the nuclear bomb. But it really takes a lot of the time. You have enough capacity to do it but it takes really a lot of the time and you can research v v1 1 and the v2 rockets which are good but uh, i for me it's just a waste of of your leadership you can do much much better stuff with your leadership distribution than v1 and v2 rockets that you can you can actually spam those rockets in a huge amounts and disorganize your enemy really a lot but it's not fun it's not fun at all trust me there is no any special visual effects that can make it fun so don't even bother with that I think that's that's all I need for now. Let's improve my militia and garrison. And rise the recruitment of officers. Currently I have a one one hundred and thirty-one percent officer ratio, with which will go down of course after I 
build all those divisions you can see that when you're building each division you have a required amount of officers let's see manpower cost build time officers so each of those brigades armor brigades needs 100 officers for example and after you build each division your officer ratio will go down let's correct my industrial capacity changes uh, something like this it will change by time so what I'm planning to do I have a one corpse here that is attached directly to the army group but later it will be a separate army that will confront the Soviet Union but I will talk about it later I just want to show you my short-term plans let's open the battle editor uh, in the near future I will have an event that will allow me to annex one part of Czechoslovakia so future border with Czechoslovakia will be somewhere oops sorry somewhere around here I'm not 100 100% sure but something like this and I will move all my infantry divisions here and we'll build one more corps that will be attached to first army you can see that my first army have four corpses so I have a room for a one more corpse which will go here they will try to hold the line while this panzer corpse or armored corpse will try to break through somewhere around here and encircle the enemy and after that Czechoslovakia will probably be fully annexed and I will open another front line against Poland draw it like this and from here I will have enough room so you can see my future front line let's make it thicker quite large I will try to draw just a simple plan while time passes uh, let's just check out how nationalist Spain is standing in this war I'm not sure are they losing or winning if they are starting to win I will definitely influence them because I want them as my ally let's influence since I have enough leadership let's influence Yugoslavia I want them on my side so let's draw a simple plan mm, must change color infantry 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 those armor armor divisions over here 
will probably be after they break through the Czechoslovakia they will be positioned somewhere here and they will use me as a flanking force the infantry here will try to keep the enemy in place of course first thing I want to do is take over the dancing and connect those two areas of Germany and we'll try to pull out the fast breakthrough with my Panzer divisions like this, quite simple nothing special actually in a reality it, will, it would be a huge huge flanking maneuver because this is the huge amount of territory around 450 kilometers long front line and this will be my battle for Poland I hope you understand it All right let's delete the battle plan time passes slowly and I don't want to attack Poland too soon because that way other countries will see me as an aggressor my threat will rise up and they will start to drift toward the Allies I don't want that because I am increasing the threat of four important Allies so other factions will probably drift away from them I can now lower, lower the counter espionage in those countries counter espionage missions for your foreign spies will kill their domestic spies you can see that France have counter espionage of zero that's because my spies that are over there was killing them and they spies after they are recruited they are killed immediately so my other spies have easy time to increase the threat of them or do whatever mission you set and that's the way I like to do first thing I wanna do is to infiltrate my spies into enemy countries set the counter espionage at maximum so they kill the enemy spies first and then set my mission probably on increased threat on or, uh, or support our party what I did in USA oh I forgot to send my spies to USA let's do it immediately my guys how I forgot to do it I set the mission to support our party but I didn't set my spies sending priority over there and why I want to support my party in a USA because next elections in a USA will be somewhere around 1940 I don't know the exact month but the year is 1940 if my party is strong enough in the USA they can probably win elections over there and they will start to drift away from allies and drift toward me because we will have similar ideology that's the point it is quite hard to, to make the USA join the Axis but you can at least keep them away from allies for as long as you can that's the whole point in that mini game All right my production queue is full I'm doing everything I can let's check out the nationalist Spain at war with Republicans I think I can stop recording now I'm not sure for how long I'm doing it already I don't want this video to be too long but please if you have any kind of a suggestions how you want me to make this video I have, I've already told you that do you want this to be as some kind of a tutorial which will be harder for me to do it 
I understand the game concepts, I know how to play it. I have already won a few campaigns. I have almost 400 hours playing it. But making a tutorial will be hard because it is a, such a complex game. I should write down the script and run through every single part from basics to more advanced stuff. For me, the best way it will be to make a simple let's play, a simple walkthrough where I will just play the game and show you the tactics, the strategy that I like and probably mention some tips by the way. Okay, you can share your thoughts on my Facebook page, you can find the link in the description, you can post your comments down below. And that's it, thank you for watching guys. Until the next time, I wish you all the best and bye-bye.